<laughs> Good morning and welcome to another edition of Main Street. That's right, we've been on vacation for about a month and a half, sort of retooling, if you will, but uh, we're ready to hit it again, and I have really a couple of fantastic guests today. We're coming to you live from the local access uh, Channel 9 studio on the campus of Muscatine Community College. My name is Dwayne Hopkins. Welcome to the show. Well, with me today uh, is uh, our two individuals uh, that are with uh, Unity Point Health uh, here in Muscatine. Uh, one of these individuals uh, shares with me some time in sort of, I guess you could say, the entertainment industry uh, locally. Her name is uh, Kim Wiseman Johnson. Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Kim is a fantastic singer. Uh, Kim's husband, Mark, and myself, we sometimes get together and form a, a trio and uh, entertain pretty much church groups uh, around course, the community yeah. and so forth. So, uh, but by profession, by profession now, Kim is a midwife. That's right, she's a midwife at Unity Point Health Clinic. She brings with her today her boss, Robert Armada. Dr. Armada, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, no, he, he's really trying to be sober, but we know he's not, <laughs> he's not that sober. You know, a little bit of laughing. Kim, let's start with you. Uh, you've lived in Muscatine how long now? I have been down here since 2010. 2010. Yes. And you came from Genesis East. I did in Davenport. Quad City girl. And the group. Yes. Uh, did, now, did, were you born and raised in the Quad City? I was born and raised in Moline. Okay. And then I was a registered nurse in 1990. I did that for 14 years, and then I moved into the mid level, became a advanced registered nurse practitioner, and a certified nurse midwife. Wow. Then I w worked at the group, and I was recruited down to Muscatine. Well, and I'm going to ask this question just like right off the cuff. How many babies have you delivered since you've been in Muscatine? You know, I don't know. We do about 30 a month. Really? And we share this with a couple, two, three providers. Now, are there, are there any other midwives here at Unity Point Muscatine? Yes, Kimberly Sprague. I see. And uh, she and I have been together for over 12, 12 years. Now, what, what's, what's the need for a midwife. Why, why do we need a midwife? Well, a midwife, I think, is unique in that we are, we tend to like to labor with the women. We are with women, is what midwife means. And so we come mean, alongside I've and... I've always heard that having a baby is, it's like giving birth to a, to a, a bowling ball or something <laughs> like that. And you, you want to share that? <laughs> I do, I do. Since I've been there too, I've done that. So <laughs> we, we come along women and labor with them. And then we always have a physician that backs us up in case we need to do a cesarean section or we have an emergency. And so we work as a team. We share a practice. Okay. So the two midwives and the OBGYN, okay. we work together as a team here at Muscatine. So Dr. Armada, you're fairly new to Muscatine, correct? That's correct. How long have you been here? Since November 5th. How many babies have you delivered? Probably over 14,000. Really? Are, are you serious? Serious. Not in Muscatine, wow. but... <laughs> That's phenomenal. Yeah. You should know how to do it by now, I would think. So, what... And I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here. What, what, what do you like about, about Kim and her team? And now that you're a member of that team. Well, the midwives give a special different care than the obstetrician in a way. You know, they, uh, they have more patient contact with the patients, usually. And, um, you know, it's just like another obstetrician, gynecologist. They take care of uh, the normal vaginal deliveries. And if there's a problem, they call me for everything, for problems, or if they want any opinions, you know, they call me. So, you know, all of us have to work together sure. to, to make sure that everything is okay. And, and that's the only way it works and the only way it should be. Sure. Well, tell me, because I don't know, what does OBGYN stand for? 
Out of bounds. I'm just kidding. <laughs> out of bounds? <laughs> out of balance. <laughs> no, well, OB <laughs> is obstetrics. OB is obstetrics. GYN is gynecology. Okay. So for OB, you do the obstetrical portion. That's the taking care of the pregnant women. The, you know, the prenatal care, vaginal delivery, C-sections, tubal ligations. Then the gynecology portions are the female problems like infections, surgeries like hysterectomies, laparoscopies, laser surgeries, all these uh, communicable diseases. You got the pronunciation down. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't do that. Kim, what? Let's get right into it now. What? What, what is? to you, the most important part about your job? For me, I think it's as simple as meeting the need of each person that walks in my door. So each person comes in here, maybe for just preventative health. Um, we see women throughout the lifespan, so we may see them from 10 years old up to 104. But for me, I wanna meet that need of that woman, and many times, they don't say it the first time. You know, They don't always tell me what they want or they need. And then to build that relationship with them, oftentimes they start sharing and telling me, you know, things that they are concerned about and more personal things that, you know, they would like to see some changes in. Um, so for me, it's meeting that need for each individual. So with, with two midwives mm -hmm. and, a, and an OBGYN doctor, <clears throat> and, I'm, and I'm doing a little bit of math in my head here, there's seven days a week, 24 hours a day, is there time enough for uh, all of you? I mean, I mean, it, it seems like it would be kind of a stressful atmosphere. Well, it is a stressful <laughs> atmosphere. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> well, we basically, um, you know, one third of the month, Kim is on first call. Now what does that? What Kimberly. Is, what is, what is, well, what does that mean? First call is, uh, you know, all. The, during the, day, during the day, that 24 hour period, you know, she'll take care of whatever phone calls that needs to be taken care of. She makes rounds in the hospital for patients in the hospital. And people that come into labor or p patient that walks in emergency room. So they'll take care of that. But if they need to have like a cesarean section for emergency, I'm always on call. So um, I'm on second call for two thirds of the month. I'm on first call. Well, basically, I'm on second call two thirds of the month. I'm on first call one third of the month. So I'm on call pretty much every day. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so it it takes effort. And the goal is is to uh, make this practice where it should be where uh, you know, we deliver the care for people in Muscatine that they're missing. Because essentially, I'm the only OBGYN in Muscatine. Oh. Uh, there's a gynecologist in Muscatine, but um, you know, I respect very highly what I know him. But I want to be just as good as him or better. Oh. A little so, competition there. <laughs> I'm competitive. They're both so. great. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> Kim, you, you and your husband and my wife and I, we, we, we went to, out for dinner Friday night. Uh, how many, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to ask this, but how, how many pregnant women do we have under your care and your oh, associate's wow. care in Muscatine right now? Now, not everyone that, that comes to uh, Unity Point is from Muscatine, correct? That's correct. Sometimes we are still pulling from the Quad Cities because of our past experience. Um, and then we have the is rural... Are you, are you like a, the, the, the great used car salesman? <laughs> in that if somebody buys a used car from you and has a good experience, they come back in a couple of years and buy another one? I'd like to think so, Hoppy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think so. Um, but we do. We have quite a... Um, area that we cover. You know, from we've had some Mennonites from Kelowna. We've got a, oh, really? uh, some people from Washington. We've got Durant. 
We've got the Quad Cities. We've pulled from Orion, Illinois. So some of them, you know, we do create a following sometimes. What, what, what keeps these people from inquiring or, or even pursuing that kind of health care uh, in the Iowa City area or even in the Quad Cities? You know, I think when they know they can get quality care locally and yet we respect the fact that there are some high-risk situations, many of which my physician or our physician, Dr. Armada, can cover. But then even then there are some that need to be seen regionally like at Iowa City if they present and are too high risk. So we know our limitations and yet there's so much that we have to offer here and can manage here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna get a little personal <clears throat> with Kim. If you'll give us a few minutes here. <clears throat> a few years back uh, in the process of giving birth to this lady you ended up adopting the child. Oh, I know. That's a God story. Yeah, we, my husband and I were in a adoption process. We were doing the baby steps, the home study, and I had three raised children in their 20s at that time, and our house was too quiet. And I, my husband, Mark, had never had children. And so I thought, you know, what about adoption? There's a lot of children that don't have homes. And so we started to pursue adoption. And um, on a night that a tornado came through Muscatine. Hold that thought. Dr. Armada, have you heard this story? <laughs> no. <laughs> Boy, you're in for a treat. Okay, Kim. Well, I'm surprised. That, this is kind of fun. I didn't know we were going to do this today. So, yeah, a tornado I came through it. Muscatine. <laughs> and um, I got a call. I was supposed to be like off, 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 off. There were three other providers ahead of me. No one could make it to this delivery. I happen to be like five to seven minutes from the hospital, so I get this panicked call or this, you know, you need to get here now call. So I came in jeans, slid in, delivered a baby, and um, beautiful young woman, and she just decided that, you know, it wasn't a, a right time for her to be having, you know, a baby at this time. It wasn't? It was not, and so she made a decision to adopt out. So I went home after this delivery, and um, my husband said, where have you been? And I said, well, actually, I ran out and did a delivery that the others couldn't attend. And I said, this one, show, you know, this one will go up for adoption. And you, know, you don't think anything of it when you deliver over a couple thousand babies, and some babies go up for adoption. Um, but my husband said, well, what about us? And I looked at him, and I said, you know, I've delivered a lot of babies. I've never taken any home. That's impossible. <laughs> And so <clears throat> I let that go. But like you, he was driving a school bus at that time, and he decided that um, he would text me the next day and say, well, you know, what about us? Um, anyway, I did, I did end up calling um, Dr. Sturdivant at that time, and she sat up in bed and said, you and Mark are in an adoption process. And I said, I know, but I would have never thought to ask. So when I did call the attorney, the attorney said, yes, that's not possible. And I said, that's OK. I, I totally understand. And at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I did get a call from the birth mother. And she said, Kim, you and your husband are in an adoption process. And I said, yes, we actually are. And she said, you know, are you interested in this baby? And I said, you know, we'd love to have this baby. And she said, I don't want this baby to go anywhere else. So we ended up adopting Savannah yeah that's phenomenal it was the only reason beautiful. I bring that to light <clears throat> is I am somewhat remotely involved in that process and she's a she's a, a lovely little girl kind of ornery but that's all right you can be <laughs> ornery at that age uh, and I didn't know if you had heard this story or not but I thought you deserve to hear this story so that kind of gives you a better idea of, of possibly who you're working with and she's a great team member, a great team member. I got her pegged. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what, what's new at Unity Point Health? Uh, what are we, what will we be looking at on down the line with regards to OBGYN, uh, uh, birthing uh, uh, issues and so forth? Well, what's new basically is, um, you know, I've had a lot of experience in robotic surgery, but we don't have a robot in the hospital. So I do a lot of uh, minimal invasive surgery if they're indicated. 
So that's one that would be a benefit to the population in Muscatine and sure. the surrounding areas. So instead of uh, them staying for two to three nights in the hospital, it's a daycare surgery, they go home the oh, same yeah. day or within 24 hours. So um, you, know, you just have to have the right cases for it. You, know, you just can't force to do a uh, laparoscopic procedure and something that you're going to end up opening up anyway. Sure. So, um, so there's a lot to offer in Muscatine. You know, the only drawback we have is we don't have um, an NICU, and uh, so all the premature babies have to be, or premature labor patients have to be sent to Iowa City. Oh. You know, because they can't be taken care of the hospital. If they deliver and no chance to transfer them, then the baby has to be transferred to Iowa City once it's delivered and stabilized. So, uh, so other than that, you know, and also the cancer, the big cancer surgeries have to go out to the big university hospitals. One thing that <clears throat> Unity Point Health, which is a I don't want to say a division of, but I, I don't know what else to say, of, of uh, Trinity, uh, mm -hmm. which has a huge hospital in Rock Island uh, and other facilities in the Quad Cities. Uh, but being a part of uh, that network allows Muscatine to be able to reach out and touch other services uh, and recruit from there. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember, and I've lived in Muscatine my entire life, years ago when it was called Muscatine General Hospital. And, and it really wasn't the, the best medical facility in the world, but since Unity Point Health or Trinity has gotten involved and, and steered uh, some things in the right direction, uh, we now have uh, the capability of, of uh, reaching out for mental health issues and, and things like that, and having a midwife and then having two midwives uh, and, then, and then, of course, an OBGYN. I mean, it, it's come a long ways, but we're looking for it to come to go a lot farther right. as well. Mm -hmm. So, I think we're real blessed to have a regional specialist, right? As your past, to have that in a community rural hospital is really, you know, that's a blessing to us. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Um, yeah, to have his expertise here. So, <clears throat> I did ask earlier if you guys were on the clock right now or not on the clock? Or? Yeah, we're on the clock right now. <laughs> but we're always on the clock, right? <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know that uh, President Jim Hayes is probably looking <laughs> down the hallways uh, at Unity Point Health right now for you. So uh, it's, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you guys on the show. And we've learned quite a bit about, uh, well, delivering babies uh, actually here in Muscatine. And we know that the people come from all over mm -hmm. to Muscatine. It's a destination for that kind of activity. So, again, uh, oh. Doctor, thanks for being. Thank you here. very much, Kim. Always a pleasure. I know, Thank always you. for you too, Happy. Well, next week on uh, Main Street, uh, Dave Bakke, uh, local conservationist, uh, uh, will be on the show to talk a little bit about Bald Eagle Days coming up. So, uh, for my guests today. Uh, I want to say thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week.